So this is a year ago, again, this is my yard. We started on September 26, 2009. We got all these things to start growing there in the spring. We got all this food in the summer and the fall. In one year, instead of mowing my lawn now, I go out and I can spend two hours harvesting. That's pretty cool. So now we're doing this at UMass. So our goal is to transform our quarter acre grass lawn right in front of Franklin Dining Commons into this model edible landscape that can be highly productive and aesthetically pleasing, offering education about sustainable living and permaculture to the UMass Amherst campus and local community. Sounds good, right? That was a picture of it on the left hand side right when we started. That was day one. We're just about finished now. We moved over 250,000 pounds of compost and wood chips. That's a quarter of an acre, or I'm sorry, a quarter of a million pounds of organic matter by hand, no fossil fuels on site, in 13 days. We had a lot of volunteer help because we couldn't have done this with just a few people. That's a lot of weight. We're kind of sore now because of all that. We had 125 different volunteers come and help us out. We made this the first and the largest highly trafficked sheep mulching effort on a public university campus in the entire nation. We made history. We got the media attention. We had outside organizations helping us. We had living roots. We had high school students. We had people from every one of the five colleges in this area. We've been having big brothers, big sisters finish the very last bed, the very last sheet mulch on Thursday of this week. And if you want to help, we might have one day this afternoon, uh, one, one day this, one afternoon this week of volunteering left. So there's still a little bit of time to get involved. We made 22 news. We made the Springfield Republican. We made the front page of the Daily Hampshire Gazette. We're going to be in the Collegian this week. We'll probably the Greenfield Reporter pretty soon. And soon, not yet confirmed, but the Boston Globe, the New York Times, international publications, we're going to be everywhere. Because we're making history with this project. So if you want to learn more, you can contact me or the entire UMass Permaculture Planning Committee umasspermaculture at gmail.com. <coughs> if you want to learn, if you want to take a permaculture course, we're offering one next semester to plant and soil science and environmental design majors. It's called Intro to Permaculture Design, BCT 397. There also might be a permaculture planning committee next year. So that's an option. So take down this email address and send us an email. You can also take courses outside of UMass through an organization called Living Roots. There's also places to volunteer, a place called Serious Community, which is in Shootsbury. It's about 15 minutes from here. And they've been doing permaculture for 32 years. You're also writing. Can I change it? I can go back. This is Serious Community. It's in Shootsbury. They build houses using the trees from the land. They also build houses using straw bale, straw, garden waste. They grow, they grow a lot of their own food. So here's also how you can get involved. You can volunteer at Serious Community. You can volunteer at Triple Brook Farm, which is a place in Southampton, Mass. Send me an email. If you don't get all these down, I can tell you all these resources. Also contact other local permaculture designers. John Niger, Jonathan Bates, and Eric Tonesmeyer, Ned Phillips-Jones. Those are a few permaculture designers in this area. This is actually a great area for permaculture. It's one of the hot spots in the entire country. If you also want to learn more about this project, you can come to one of our events. So on Thursday, December 2nd, we're showing a documentary. It's called Dirt. Has anyone heard of that before? So it's a new documentary that's coming out. 
we're playing it at six o'clock, and then we're going to have a discussion, which might go for an hour or so after. It'll probably get out around nine o'clock, although it might be a little bit earlier than that. That's a way for you all to just learn more about this project and just start having conversations with people who share similar interests as you. So just a recap, what is permaculture? You know, permaculture is a lifestyle. It's about living sustainably. It's also about growing food sustainably, but it's not just that. Permaculture definitely involves growing food. And we certainly need to be doing that to become a more socially and environmentally responsible society. But permaculture is more than just growing food. It's an entire lifestyle. It involves living simply and sustainably, which doesn't mean you have to live uncomfortably. It just means that we need to stop living beyond our means. Because if we don't, we're gonna end up in big trouble. Our resources are not infinite, and we may very well experience things falling apart in our lifetime. But there's hope. We can do more than just sustain what we already have. In fact, we have the technology and the knowledge to regenerate. It's beyond sustainability. What we're doing at UMass is we're regenerating a landscape, regenerating the soil. And our goal as a permaculture planning committee is to educate and encourage and inspire other people to go out there and at least take a stab at it and start trying to grow some of your own food. Because imagine that. Imagine if everyone started growing food. We could start growing food everywhere and how beautiful and how beyond sustainable of a world that would be. Humans are considered a keystone species, and that's a very big role to have in the ecosystem. We were given a job, which is to be caretakers of the earth, to manage the ecosystems we're a part of in a responsible way, and to make the world a better place. So this last point I'm gonna make is this. I could have stood up here for about 50 minutes and I could have told you the names of permaculture plants and try to explain to you how to go about doing the entire permaculture design process. But the fact of the matter is you can't learn permaculture in 50 minutes. And it wouldn't do good for anyone for me to try to do that. But what I did instead is try to show you examples of successful permaculture applications and provide you with local opportunities and resources to get involved. So my real goal with this presentation was to inspire, was to share with you all what I'm doing in my life and why I think it's necessary for us all to be thinking and possibly living this way. So how did I do? By a show of hands, is anyone inspired by what they heard, what they saw today? Good. <laughs> then my job is completed. <laughs> Thank you all for